Ways of classifying plants. Classification of plants. Modern classification groups plants by sexual reproductive characteristics. Some Native American tribes classify plants by directions, such as north, south, east, and west. The Cherokee, for example, used to classify plants by their function. So for instance, they will have plants or warrior plants such as the brambles and poison ivy, or scalp plants, such as poplar and plantain. The Anishinaabe of the Great Lakes classify them by family roles. Therefore, cedar became grandmother cedar, birch became grandfather birch, and elder system balsam fir, from balsam fir. The Chinese divided plants into yin and yang, as they took into account the female and male energies. The field guide is a really important instrument and tool for our findings and to learn about plants. Try to use a field guide that has a black and white drawings. Remember that color guides made it, make it diff really difficult to identify a plant or flower. Once you identify the plant or flower, then you will learn to color it. If you decided by any chance to taste a plant or leaf or a flower, Please, make sure that you double or triple check before doing that, as what you don't know can kill you. Some plants might look alike, but have different results or different effects in your body. A good guide for beginners is the Peterson Series Guide. Here we have the two most common used guides. Become familiar with both of them. The Peterson Guide series is going to group flowers by flower color, by petal shape, and then by family, etc. The New Combs Field Guide series is the most simple version for amateur botanists and herbologists, and it is less complex than a botany book and quicker to access than most flower group field guide series. So, it might be a good idea for you to begin with this one. You can start with either one, but if you want to retain more information, remember that herbalism is just about repetition just like botany. Gathering Medicinal Plants Have you ever wondered how many flower petals does it take to fill or make a new perfume fragrance? Do you know that flowers such as ballads don't have a smell? However, many manufacturers of high NM perfumes still create perfumes with violet essences. How is this possible? With a new interest in herbs, plants are being destroyed. Golden seal and ginseng hardly exist in the wild, and equinacea, sweetgrass, and ginger are also almost extinct. Even common herbs are in trouble. In northern Michigan, milkweed was eradicated to make life jackets during World War II. There are a few practices that you can follow to ensure continuity and growth of plants for future generations. Know the plant's reproductive habits before you gather. Does the plant reprodu reproduce from underground rhizomes or from seeds? Are you going to use the plant that you gather or parts of it? This, as we will see later, is also important spiritually. Gather only what you need. Don't gather endangered plants or species. Find a substitute. Don't gather for wet ground. The footprints that you leave compress the soil, making future growth difficult. Some people might not care about how many times they gather. Gather irresponsibly and don't leave any food to the animals in the area. Remember that what you do have consequences. Don't gather from the spray areas, railroad tracks, near factories, or alongside roads or organic farms or polluted wa waters. Remember, you're going to be making tinctures and other medicinal remedies from what you gather. So you want to make sure that you don't get anybody and yourself sick. In the next chapter, we're going to be talking about guidelines for gathering. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you in the next chapter.